We are the National Bottle Museum. It, it seemed strange to me at first when I first moved here to Boston Spa in the 80s, and it's like, a national museums in Boston Spa. And then I realized basketball, baseball, they're not in big cities either. They're in small towns too, so. We've gotta be close to 3,000 bottles if we're not over 3,000. The bottles range from the early 1700s until some very contemporary pieces from the 2000s even. There obviously are milk bottles, there are perfume bottles, there are decorative bottles, dresser bottles, historic flasks, Saratoga types, soda and beer bottles. There are many more. If you can name it and it came in a bottle, it's that food bottles is another category. And somewhere there's someone who collects them. We're a history museum. That's really what we are as a history museum. Every bottle it's a history artifact. It may not be an old history artifact or an antique one, but it's still a history artifact. A site for the colony was selected, 40 miles up the James River estuary, and called Jamestown. Jamestown had a glass factory. It used to be everybody drank beer and alcohol for the reason the water wasn't safe to drink and so they needed containers to put the alcohol in. That's why bottle making is America's first industry. The major tools were the blowpipe, which has been around since Egypt. I mean, it's really old. It's still in use today. If you see them doing art glass, they still use a blowpipe. They put the hot glass on the end of it, and then they blow into it, and they blow it up. I don't want to say like a balloon, but very similar. They put air in it to force it into the mold. And the mold itself was early ones were made of wood, and then they became made of metal. And you would have consistency time after time. In the early 1900s, the automatic bottle making machine was created, and that changed the entire industry. Saratoga County, they started making the bottles for the Saratoga waters. They originally started up on a mountaintop in Greenfield, Mount Pleasant Glassworks, and they actually built a log road coming down from the mountain. And what happened is every time they brought bottles down, bump, 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 broken bottles, taking bottles up, bump, 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 broken bottles. Eventually, they moved the entire factory to just outside the city of Saratoga in what's called Congressville and they made bottles until the, probably the early 1900s. The heyday was the 1850s, 60s, and 70s for making the bottles. All the pieces upstairs in the uranium glass display are actually mine. I've been collecting that before I knew it glowed in underneath a black light. They made them with uranium dioxide. Under the kerosene lights, it would flicker and glow. So kerosene would make it shinier and prettier. So that was what it started, especially for candle holders and stuff. It was for decorative tableware. The museum actually has three sections to it. It has the museum itself, which is the majority of the space. We have the glasswork studio on Washington Street. They do hot glasswork there, so they make all kinds of things there. Marbles, paperweights, very creative. Lots of artists use it, the space. And there's also classes taught. Then we have upstairs the Jan Rutland Memorial Artist Space. Jan Rutland was the director here for many years, and she started the artist space, so it was named in her honor the year after she passed. I think the biggest thing about bottles is, as I said, they're history artifacts, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an antique to be valuable 
or to be a history artifact. Value is in the eye of the beholder. That's what helps make them so interesting. We're adding bottles all the time to this collection.